So we are back, and I never got better results so far. I'm using the refined transmitter receiver system. Um, so this is the new two-part receiver coil. This was the old receiver coil. I was told that I would get a higher Q factor if I wound stranded wire for the first part of the coil being 16 gauge. Second part of the outer receiver coil is um, same wire, 16 gauge, but they're in parallel side by side. Um, open circuit voltage here, we're using better diodes, faster. I'll just show you what they look like. These are the diodes we're using. They're better than UF 4007 in theory. So. I'll show you what happens when I disconnect the feedback from the battery and then reconnect it because the receiver coil is feedbacking its power back into the battery. So, disconnected. Um, show you what happens. And reconnected. I've never gotten the voltage to go up that high before. Get my ferrite rods tuned properly. It's hovering between 3.5 and 3.6 for voltage. Um, so this is a quick update video. Read the description. Go back a couple videos um, to the long one. Basically, it's more refinements to the system. Um, I'll take my tuning ferrites out. I will show you how much power is present, actually, from the new receiver coil arrangement pretty significant and I've never had that much power there before I'll try and get it tuned with a ferrite on camera and the bulb will get much brighter so as you see our bulb is at maximum brightness while we're at minimum power consumption bulb is extremely bright. It's almost like we're conjuring energy simply from the arch form of the device being how it's built. Um, intense wireless power effects are still present in the area. Almost magic-like still. Very interesting. Doing these effects puts no load or strain on the transmitter. That bulb is extremely bright simply due to the fact the outer coil is too 16 gauge stranded wires in parallel. Um, now I'll show you. Uh, that bulb looks like it's about to burst. That 4 watt incandescent was probably lit at 8 watts. Um, now I will feed back the power again. If I can get this damn rod to stay still. Back into our driving battery and we'll watch what happens. And the open circuit voltage here is 120 volts DC due to the resonance. So now we hooked it back up, we immediately see a recharge effect occurring. And I didn't even get this properly fine-tuned, being another ferrite rod can go in here. Because further fine-tuning the whole apparatus, being the transmitter and receiver apparatus with the correct ferrites, further impedance matches the power takeoff coil, being the outer coil here, back with the battery, increasing recharge effects. Um, and when these recharge effects occur, we still have wireless power so people said they wanted more shorter more shorter videos with a quick intro of what's going on what's going on is we built a mathematically perfect model of Tesla's magnifying transmitter 416 times mathematically perfect scaled model reproduction the transmitter is a two coil system read the video description exactly how it's built get our free book on how it's built it's on archive.org, completely free. Um, to sum up what we did and what's happening is... Uh, got it even more tuned. So, what's happening is somehow we're pulling in a dielectric energy from the Earth. Um, it's dielectric induction, somehow. We're pulling in a dielectric wireless energy field in an induction-based fashion from the Earth connection. Uh, simply grounding the system pulls in wireless energy from the earth, which is present on the outside of the conductor. Um, 
and it acts like an energy pump somehow. Um, and our two part our two part receiver coil. The first inner part of the coil builds up immense reactive power. The outer part of the coil converts that reactive power into real power and can uh, recharge the battery or run a load for a time. So, figured I'd show that, demonstrate that, and we found scattered throughout three old electrical engineering books the energy synthesis equation. And based on all the data, we were able to elaborate it further and make a fourth part of the equation. And our battery is even still slowly recharging. And I can hear the ferrite slowly ringing. Not sure if you can hear that. Um, but in theory, bismuth rods would be even better for tuning. And once again, to sum it up, we've created a heat pump style energy system. It is a scaled down model of Tesla's magnifying transmitter. It somehow pulls in energy in a dielectric induction fashion from the earth. Um, it creates near magic like power effects due to resonant field phenomena being multiplicative in nature, not additive. And yeah, we have a two part transmitter system being two coils. Uh, the description on how to build it will be in the video description below. I can't quite remember if I used 22 or 24 gauge wire, I think it was 22. The details will be in the video description. The L1 and L2 coils on the transmitter are equal in length, um, wound opposite to each other, which makes them 180 degrees out of phase for efficient single transistor oscillation. Um, I'm using a 110K carbon film 1 watt biasing resistor now on the transmitter. Um, and the two part receiver coil is in theory supposed to decouple or decouple cause from effect. First part of the receiver coil builds immense reactive power, which is the part of the coil which is the single wire which has the capacitor in parallel with it. Outer part of the coil is two of the same wires being 16 gauge in parallel to create more power, or I should say to lower the impedance when battery charging or running a light bulb. It's basically acting as a decoupled transformer. The outer part of the coil acts as a flywheel for the phase shifted reactive energy of the first part of the coil, which is what we discovered in the old notes using the Steinmetz method on how to convert reactive power into real power from the square root of minus one. Um, look into Eric Dollard's works on that. So now I will disconnect the resonant feedback that's going into the battery and we will immediately see our voltage drop from the battery. Our voltage will drop despite us consuming less current, which is interesting. Hopefully you can see that. These effects, I want it all visible. And um, I'll reconnect that. And our voltage will charge despite the transmitter consuming more current because um, the correct tuning takes place and the excess power from the outer part of the receiver coil. So I'm hoping those effects are visible. Again, I will disconnect. We will see that effect again. We dropped a little bit despite consuming less power. I'll reconnect. And connecting and reconnecting has no impact on this wireless power field you can tune into. So. That's that. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, join the Patreon, download the free book, spread it around. Um, and yeah, thank you everybody. Energy synthesis. Crazy stuff. And fine tuning is required to get the device working well. So again, thank you everyone.